to Moretta Threads. My name is Moretta and today we are turning a two-piece salvo suit from this into this. I'm a self-taught seamstress. I include my mistakes in the videos to helpfully help you along the way. Let's get started. So the first thing you want to do is print just the first page. In the top left hand corner it has a little box measuring one centimeter and one inch that you can use. If that measures correctly with your ruler, you can proceed to finish printing the last nine pages. This is a 10 page document. You'll notice that each page has a little line at the bottom. You're going to try to line these up and it'll end up creating a diamond shape once all of the pages are taped together, which will look like this. Now, if you're a standard size eight or 10, you can just follow the pattern as is. However, for me, I am a small in my waist and a large around my hips. So here I am adapting the pattern to accommodate for that sizing. So where this double line is on the sewing pattern is what you're going to use to break up the two segments between waist and hip. I'm marking here the small and then the large and I'm joining them together so that I can get my ideal fit. Now remember for the bottom half of the pattern, we're using that large measurement reference. So I'm marking that here. And when you get to this segment of the sewing pattern, remember that this is our front part of our skirt. And this part here is where the split will be. And it's actually connected to the dart and the dart is connected to our waist. So this measurement here, you can see I've cut at the size small. When you get to this part of the pattern, remember to do a size small again, because this is a continuation of the dart, which is a part of the waistline. And this is what I am referring to when I say dart. I will also mention that the front pattern overlaid to the back pattern will show a two centimeter drop in the back. This is to account for a little bit of coverage on your bum. And if you decide to shorten the pattern later, try to remember that two centimeter allowance. Starting on the pants, you're going to unpick that bottom hem and break apart that side seam so that we can access the fabric. So I pulled across the front sewing pattern and I realized straight away that I didn't have enough fabric to get this full width. So I am cutting at the center point and I will discard the left hand side and use the right hand side. The reason for this is because I didn't want to have a seam running down the center point of the skirt. So what I will do is fold the fabric on that center point there. So here I am folding the pants and now I am going to overlay the pattern right on that fold point so that I can maintain that um, idea of not having the seam showing down the center. Because of the limitations on fabric, you'll have a look here that on that fold, I actually sacrificed about one to two centimeters. So hopefully um, somewhere else in another panel, I can add in another centimeter or two so that I can make an allowance for what I lost. Because of the limitations on fabric, I had to move the goalposts a little bit. So here I decided to split this pattern into two segments so that I could easily um, squeeze them into the fabric that I did have available. Now here I am highlighting this edge as a reminder to myself to add one centimeter as a seam allowance. And you're just going to repeat that process again, except this time you're adding a seam allowance on both sides because that side there is supposed to be folded. So we needed to include that seam allowance. Returning to the front part of the skirt, I just realized I forgot to film cutting those left and right segments, but oh well, you get it. Now we're going to overlock those edges and you will come back with this. Now the front left segment has little circle markers to indicate where you should add the split. So just pop a little pin in that segment there that indicates where the split will finish. Moving on to the other side, you're just going to add pins all the way down to the bottom because we're going to straight stitch that whole section. Now for the back, we are going to overlock each one of those sections and you will be left with something that resembles this. 
And now for the zipper. What you're going to want to do is grab an invisible zipper around 20-25 centimeters and you're just going to trim off about a centimeter of the top because you just don't need the top to be that tall. With that done, you're going to twist that over once and align those two corners up with each other and place a little pin there. Pull down that zipper and turn the zipper over once and then one more time again and you will pin that corner. Now slowed down again, we're just going to turn that zipper over once and then one more time and get those two corners linking up with each other and just pop a pin in there. Now we're going to take out our foot and we're going to insert a zipper foot. I really recommend buying one of these. It's going to make your life so much easier. So to begin, we're going to pop that zipper through. We will let that feed through on the left channel because you want the needle to be as close as possible to that zipper line so that you have a really close edge and a nice seamless finish later. When you get close to the bottom, just make sure you finish that with a nice clean backstitch. Now with the zipper on this side, we're going to have the zipper going through the right channel so that we're getting as close as possible to that zipper edge. Finishing again with a backstitch. Now close that zipper up and we're going to close the rest of that bottom half. So just pop a pin in there and now we're actually going to change that from a zipper foot or sorry, an invisible zipper foot to a narrow zipper foot. And if you can see there, we got as close as possible to where the last stitch was made. And we're making sure that we're not stitching over that overlocked edge. And you'll be left with this. Now we're just going to return to that um, universal foot. And we're going to sew down all of those sections that we initially pinned. And just remember not to sew all the way down over this split seam. Now to attach the front and back panels of the skirt, make sure that both good sides are facing each other or kissing each other. Um, and we're just going to connect those side seams. So just remember at the start to do a little back stitch. And when you're sewing down the sides, make sure that you're about half a centimeter inside of that overlocked edge. Now we're just going to press open each of those seams so that they're nice and flat. Now hopefully you might have some excess fabric. This here is about the right width, but I need double the length. So here I am just breaking it in half and joining it together. And I'm just trimming those edges. The wider, the better. I think I got about an eight or 10 centimeter width in the end. Now, hopefully you should have a nice long length that can completely wrap around the waistband of the skirt. And you're just going to attach that right there. So bring that across to your overlocker and make sure that that zipper is nice and flat and ensure that every single time you go over one of those seams that they are still pressed nice and flat. You might have to check each time just to make sure it's flat like that, but it'll give a really nice finish later on. 
and just overlock those little edges there as close as possible to where the zipper is so you don't have any fraying edges later. Now bring that across to your straight sewer and lie that over the top. You want to sew as close as you can to that zipper, not on top, just a little to the right. And just repeat that again on the other side, nice and close. And this is the reason why we did that, because you're going to turn that inside out and it gives you a seamless finish on the waistline and it conceals that little zipper point. Now right here you'll see that the two points joined up have a little bit more extra fabric than I think that they needed. So I'm bringing that back inside out and I'm just going to sew down that line maybe half a centimeter inside um, so that I can get it a little bit closer to the zipper point. So I just repeated that on the other side, making sure that I did them the exact same um, width so that when I turn them inside out again, they hopefully match. So here it is. It looks like it's coiling inside of it a little bit now. I do like that it's much closer to the top of the fabric. However, now it has some excess bulking. So I decided to turn it inside out and just cut away the top. That section there is that tall part of the zipper, which isn't being used. So I just made sure not to cut on the thread just um, above it. And when I pulled it inside out again, it um, had a much sleeker profile this time and I was happy. With the waistband finished, we can now move on to the hemline of the skirt. So here I am overlocking that base, making sure again that we have those seams open flat. With that done, I brought it back across to my straight sewer and here we are with the fabric good side facing up. Now see this little split here, we're going to fold that corner about one centimeter up and do a little stitch. And we are now going to repeat that for the other side. So now moving on to the side seams, we're going to start at that point there and just flip it up again, maybe one centimeter and start hemming the bottom of that skirt. And here we get to the little corners that we did before to avoid doing a fold and then a fold again, which sometimes just stretches the fabric and doesn't give you a nice finish. This is a way of um, having a really nice crisp corner. So I've folded that inside out again now and we're just going to go straight down and when we get to that um, point, we'll just lift the foot up and rotate the fabric around and continue down. Now, as you get to this point over here where the split is, you do have the option to backstitch it if you want it to be a little bit stronger, but I don't actually find it necessary and I think I regret doing it. It had more stitching there than it needed. So pop that up again um, and bring that down. And now we will have another go of turning that corner inside out and trying to make a nice sharp right angle there. So bring that down like that, perfect, and stitch straight down to that little corner point. Once you get to that corner, lift the foot up and rotate. And then you're back to the start again and you can just finish off there. With that done, you just wanna take that across to your ironing board and press down those fresh seams that you've done and you will be left with this gorgeous little thing here. Happy sewing and good luck!